All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. So uh, this week um, has been a whirlwind, so I didn't get to record a lot this week because I was traveling, um, because I was out in New York City for a partner event. So um, it was a really cool event all around artificial intelligence, where we see it going in the world today and how, what some different customers and companies are doing. So it was really cool to get to be part of that. If you guys want more information, just let me know. I'd be glad to share who the partner was and all that. Um, but outside of that, I've been studying for this new Oracle exam, the Foundations for Oracle Associate exam. I'll put the links down below. It's a really cool exam. Oracle offers it to anybody out there uh, for free, really. You just have to do um, their training, and then they offer a free cert. It's even open book, which I think is really cool, because that's pretty much how you're going to learn it anyway. Um, all their exams up until, I believe, the architect level are open book. So that's a pretty good testament to what they believe in their exams and what they believe they're going. Um, so they have exams all the way in their platform as a service tools like Oracle Cloud Infrastructure and then they also have their SaaS certs. Um, so I'll put a link to all the Oracle training down below. They have a race for Oracle right now going on where they're offering t up to two free certifications up until September 30th. So definitely a good chance to get your hands on a cloud certification with a very low lift. Um, there's also some very cool things in Oracle from a consideration of the fact they have a direct partnership to Microsoft Azure. So I think if you're looking to get into the Azure certification world with a low lift, I think Oracle could be a great starting point for you if you've never been in the cloud. Uh, I think it also could be a great alternative to probably an A plus if you're looking to go straight into a cloud into the cloud. Um, not really desktop oriented at all, just cloud what networking, very fundamentals. So uh, what I want to do right now is go over kind of the first practice exam that I have with the Oracle, um, kind of walk you guys through the questions that were on the test, which ones I got wrong. Um, obviously, I just a practice. I think I got a 68% on my first try. Um, it did not take me long at all. It took me, I think, 12 minutes. So let's run through it, and then let's plan on what we're going to study. All right, so when you take the practice exam with Oracle, you get the option of one, getting lots of noisy pop-ups. But you also get the option to do what's called the summary. So when you click finish your test, you'll have the option to expand, and you can see the summary of all your questions, right? So it's 34 or 35 question practice exams. I got 24 of them correct, right? So definitely not a passing grade by any means, but I do think for the foundations exam, you only have to get a 60%, so it's a very low barrier to get the actual certification. Um, they want more people to know about it, more so than to be experts in it, right? You're not looking to be an expert, you're looking to know the foundations. Also very cool. Um, so let's kind of go through, right? So let's find the first one I got wrong. I got on a hot streak here, so it looks like I got probably the first 10 questions right. First one I got wrong was this one. Let's take a look. So in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, which component is responsible for controlling traffic stuff between subnets? within the virtual cloud networking. So anybody that's followed me for a little bit can tell you this is probably going to be a weak point on every single cloud infrastructure out there, whether it's Oracle, Azure, GCP, AWS. I despise networking. Um, do not like my Network Plus test. I, I hate networking. So network questions are always just a guess for me. So it looks like the I answered route tables. The correct answer would have been cert that security lists are responsible for controlling traffic between subnets Within a virtual cloud network, they define ingress and egress rules to determine the allowed traffic at the subnet level. So the correct answer would have been here that it would have been a security list. So security lists are therefore responsible for controlling traffic between subnets and the VCN or virtual cloud network. Um, so if you want, during the test, what I found was there uh, is a very cool guide and book from Oracle. I'll put this in the links, but you can actually see that there's a book for all this OCI architecture. Um, so I'll probably go through that and look for more about networking, but since it's open book for a test, I honestly probably won't study that hard, just being honest. Um, so we'll go back to summary and see what else I got wrong. It looks like the next question I got wrong. Uh, I got three in a row wrong, so let's see start here maybe all right which of the following is not a type of oracle of oci which stands for oracle cloud infrastructure compute instance uh, so bare metal is a type so it looks like the correct one would be 
nano instances. So nano instances are not an OCI compute instance type. So let's look at the next one since I know. Uh, so the next question. In the Oracle Cloud infrastructure, block volume service, which feature enables you to increase the size of a block volume without any downtime. So I answered volume elasticity. The correct answer would have been online resizing, which actually I mean, makes sense. I went with the elasticity just because it sounded right. Uh, but the correct answer is online resizing. So online resizing is a feature that en enables you to increase the size of block volume without any downtime. So networking and storage so far for what I need to study. So let's see, what are two types of workloads supported by Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Autonomous Databases? I answered data streaming and data analysis. The correct answer is transaction processing and data warehousing. So if you're looking for the two types of workloads supported by OCI Autonomous Databases, it's transaction processing and data warehousing. So let's see what else next. All right, so in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, which component of an IAM policy, identity access and management policy, statement defines the user or group of the policy applies to you? I said resource. The correct answer is principle. So the principle is a component is the component of the IAM policy statement that defines the user or group, which Makes sense. I should know that seeing how service principles is all relates down to the identity in Azure. I put resource, so very incorrect. I think I got the next one right, the next one wrong. So, which is a key characteristic of Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Block Volume? I put it is a, a, a thermal, a thermal, and deleted with the associated instance is terminated. Uh, Obviously, it's incorrect. OCI block volumes are automatically replicated within an availability domain for high availability, ensuring data redundancy and protection against hardware failures. So the correct answer for this is a key characteristics of OCI block volume is that it's automatically replicated within the availability domain. So let's see what else. Do, do, do. So here. All right, we looked at that one. Let's go over here. All right, which data transfer type is generally free of charge in OCI? So I put egress data transfer to a different region. Ingress data transfer is free of charge. So any ingress transfer is free to OCI. Let's see what else. All right, so what type of storage is associated with instances in the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Compute Services? I put object, it's block, it's block storage. So that's going to be my other choice. Um, but So block storage is a type of storage associated with instances in the OCI Compute Services. It provides low latency, high performance storage volumes that can be attached to instances to store data and applications. Let's see what's next. Oh, I got another one wrong. How are compartment quotas applied in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure? Uh, I answered on a per tenancy basis, but the answer is per compartment. All right, we will look back at the rest later. I'm gonna go through the study book here in just a minute. All right, guys, I'm back. So I, I took a little bit of an hour and a half, two hour long break. Um, had a little dinner, hung out with the kids for a little bit, and then in the meantime decided I was, you know what, let's go ahead and take the cert, and you know what, we passed, we aced it. So I think from reading through back through the answers, and then just taking the exam, what I really saw in the exam was the fact that it's it's open book, but I didn't need to use the books or even, I mean, for the, if you really want to, you could actually take the the whole exam just using Google, but. I like to hold myself a little bit more accountable than that because you do have a lot of attempts, right? So you can take this test up to 15 times in one year. And so I thought, you know, the first time through today, just let's take it, let's see what happens. And I got a 92%. I think the hardest questions I had on the test were about autonomous databases, um, networking, always struggle with it, and storage. So storage in general, there's a lot of questions on storage. Networking, terrible at, but networking was all around route tables security list 
network security groups. So if you study those little sections, super, super easy. I think you'll, you'll ace it. Now, what do I think you could do with this certification? Um, honestly, I'd probably use it to level up and go get the one of the associate certifications from them um, and maybe more, you know, more focused professional one. Because I think for this certification, it's good for maybe an intern, maybe somebody that just wants to break in to a company that's using some Oracle cloud infrastructure, but it's not it's not an all-encompassing cert because you don't have to even open up a lab to do the cert. So I think it's very, very basic, but I think it's good just to get your little feet wet, um, like equivalent of a Microsoft 900 level certification, very content oriented, not really material oriented, not like labs and doing the work. So definitely a good cert to get your to get the feet wet and to get your entryway in. Um, I'll have a couple exam tips here at the end and on the Medium article. And until next time, tomorrow we'll be diving into the next step in Oracle and also starting the AZ500 30-day challenge. So until then, you guys have a good night.